so i hope you have uh, watched all the videos with respect to uh, revenue recognition ifrs 15 which was taught in the fr basics so i have already added all the fr related concepts for the revenue recognition now we are going to introduce the same topic when in, from the perspective of sbr now is what you will see the difference between the fr concepts and the sbr concepts uh, as a whole ifrs 15 remains the same but how you analyze it, how you approach it in, during the exam is what differs and makes SBR more challenging compared to FR. Now, uh, I'm not going to discuss in detail about the approach to revenue recognition. I've already given you a lot of examples and had a detailed discussion uh, with respect to those in my earlier videos. So as you know, as a quick summary, uh, revenue recognition, we have five steps. So the five step model have to be followed. First is to identify contract with the customer. Step two is to identify performance obligations within the contract. Uh, step three two is to determine the transaction price for the performance obligation and allocating the transaction price to the performance obligation. And step five is to uh, recognize revenue when the performance obligation have been satisfied. Now in uh, FR exam, you would have asked questions in relation to when the revenue should be recognized or uh, they would have uh, given you that there is a principal versus agent can they recognize the can the agent recognize revenue or how the agent should recognize their commission etc when it comes to sbr each of the step is actually uh, deeply analyzed they will give you a scenario which could be from any of the step there could be a customer and the contract with the customer could be deeply explained in the scenario and you have to analyze that particular scenario and give your detailed discussion element or detailed in-depth analysis with respect to this particular process. And that is what differs in SBR. So uh, <coughs> all the steps that you will need to discuss might not be there in the question, but they could focus on one specific part or, or one specific process of the revenue recognition and ask you to detailly discuss those uh, uh, according to the scenario so it is very relevant and it is very important that you as a student of sbr should learn the standard in a detailed manner like for example in fr we would have just learned identify the contract with customer the customer have to be uh you know two parties and two parties should understand the contract and they should accept the terms and conditions of the contract this is what we would have learned in the fr concept but what happens in sbr in sbr or uh with respect to IFRS 15, even when we identify a contract with the customer, there are certain conditions or parameters that are required to be met. What are they? Firstly, okay, firstly, there exists a contract. There has to be a contract between two or more parties that creates an enforceable rights and obligations. And this is mandatory otherwise there is no revenue at all right like you have, should have a contract only with a contract comes in revenue and all following criteria should be met are met okay so it's like mandatory that all the four all all the following criteria should be met when it comes to identification of a contract firstly the parties have approved the contract so let's say uh, <coughs> uh, you know there is a buyer and a seller Buyer uh, is saying a price, seller is saying another price. Both are not agree. Now here there is a contract between a buyer and a seller, but they are not able to come to a conclusion on the price. They are not agreeing on the contract. So does there is there a contract? There is no contract. Because the buyer and the seller are unable to agree on a term of a contract, which is the price. Likewise, if there is a contract between two parties, a buyer and a seller, both of them should approve the contract both of them should approve the terms and conditions of the contract it can be verbal it can be written or it can be even implied what does implication mean take an example that you go to a restaurant you asked for a, a let's say a sandwich the restaurant uh, you know the the server gave you the sandwich you started eating you didn't tell him anything you didn't, uh, you know, uh, write, give him in writing that this is the product that I was asking for. You started eating. Now, you are the consumer. You are the buyer of that particular sandwich. Now, can you say that I won't pay the price 
फॉर द सैंडविच और आई वॉन्ट पे द बिल फॉर द सैंडविच आई एट नो बिकॉज आई डेंट एक्सेप्ट दिस इज वॉट द सैंडविच इज दिस वॉज नॉट द सैंडविच After eating or after consuming the sandwich, can you say that oh, you know what? This was not the sandwich I ordered for. No. So you are implying that once the server serves you the sandwich, you are implying yourself that oh, you know what? Or you are showing you by your action that oh, you know what? This is the sandwich that I ordered for. Now let me eat it. After eating all the sandwich, now you cannot say that oh, you know what? I cannot pay the price for the sandwich because this is not the sandwich I ordered. This is an incorrect product. You cannot say that. Or you cannot say that oh you know what this is I ordered for a burger and not a sandwich. So your implication, your action, which is called as the implication, says that you have accepted the contract between you and the restaurant, where they served you the sandwich and you ate the sandwich. Now you are enforced or you are liable to pay the bill or price for the sandwich. The second is the entity can identify each party's rights. Like the person, the restaurant can identify what are their the buyer's rights and the seller's rights. The entity can identify the payment terms. Like when do they pay? They do they pay immediately or do they pay after one month or do they pay after three months according to the terms and conditions? <coughs> the contract has a commercial substance. Like uh, there is a risk, timing, or amount of future cash flows expected to change as a result of a of the contract so it is commercially substantial contract there is a risk involved in the contract there is a cash flow involved in the contract only then it's called as a commercial substance if you're doing something as a charity for free of cost then there's no commercial value for the contract but this here is uh, you are fulfilling the contract as a seller you are fulfilling the contract in exchange for a commercial value which is the price you are getting for the product you are selling it is probable that the entity will collect the consideration so if uh, you sold something to the customer as an entity a entity sold something to the customer and customer did not pay for the price he paid after some time so as entity he knows that the customer will pay after two or three months so that's that's called as probable so it's probable that entity will collect the consideration even though they are giving handing over the product so these conditions should be met if they if the entity wants to recognize a contract let me give you an example okay let me give you a very real example in this situation so let us say for example let us say there is a someone called as a now a uh, bought v guide SBR course, okay. But uh, he has not paid for it, so not paid. Paid yet. Now A, uh, we know that A has bought this course, so the course runs from, let us say, December to February, and the examination is in March. So March is the exam date so we don't need to worry about the mark so let's say it's from december to february is the course period okay now a has enrolled for this course but we guide uh, have not got the money yet consideration yet now the question is when did he enroll so let's say on 12th december 2023 a enrolled for this course enroll for this course now on 12th december 2023 has he paid the money not yet now can i recognize revenue can we guide recognize revenue revenue on this date the date on which he enrolled now as you know there is a time period for this course what is that december to february so which is approximately December uh, full January February so let's say around uh, three months okay we'll take an approximate time period of three months now the revenue standard very clearly says that over here in step five recognize revenue when performance obligation are satisfied now for this particular criteria when do I satisfy the re re uh, revenue 
when do i satisfy the performance obligation or what is the performance obligation performance obligation is giving up the courses so three month course period if i am teaching him on a on a live or a, or a recorded basis it will take three months so after three months the performance obligation is satisfied but now there is a problem here like why should i wait for three months that's the number one question we need to ask i know that okay a has enrolled the course and he will continue the course but the problem here is a v guide knows the rights of a what is the rights of a he can withdraw isn't it now if you look at from the contract perspective the both the parties have approved the contract yes both the parties have approved the contract so number 1 both parties have approved the contract approved so a have enrolled and v guide have accepted him as a student now does entity does v guide know the both parties rights v guide knows the parties rights parties rights yes v guide knows what is the parties rights we can say that there is one right which is a can uh you know withdraw okay we can withdraw before let's assume 21st december 2023 So till twenty fourth December two thousand twenty three, we can withdraw. But after that, they cannot. So this is the right of A. So that also they know. Entity can identify the payment terms. Yes. So let's say the payment terms. What is the payment term? Okay. Payment term. Let us say by February end. February end. So you can make the payment. Now by February end you can make the payment. The contract has some commercial substance, of course. Yes, it's a commercially substantial contract. So there is a commercial substance on the contract. And then finally, the fifth question is: It is probable that entity will collect the consideration. It is probable that the entity will collect the consideration. Yes, it is probable. Probable. entity will collect consideration so look at this so we are saying that as of 12th december 2023 all these contracts all these conditions to the contracts we are meeting okay but there is one problem here what is a problem i'll tell you before that look at this situation A bought the course or enrolled the course for SBR, and he has not paid yet. He will be paying only by three months, and we get accepted his payment terms. They gave him a payment term of three months. Now, uh, A can uh, get the, you know, uh, performance obligations over the period where he will be, uh, you know, watching all the videos and attending the live class, all those things. Whatever has been promised, he will be doing it over the period of time. now a has recognized <coughs> a has enrolled the course on 12 january before 21st december he can withdraw which means any time period between 12 to 21st so any time period between 12 to 21st so between 12th december to 21st december he can withdraw this is the right of the withdraw from this course this is the right from the right of a okay payment term is identifiable commercial substance is there and we are sure we guide is sure that okay you know what a has bought the course and he will pay for it he has not paid yet but he will pay for it now when do i recognize revenue see from my perspective i am perform satisfying the performance obligation even though it is over the period of time at least uh, you know for some part of the revenue i can recognize i have the right to recognize some part of the revenue even though it takes 3 months 
at least one month revenue let me recognize but when do i recognize it should i recognize on 12th december or should i recognize on or should i recognize on 21st december or should i recognize after 3 months which is on end of february on which date should i recognize the revenue it is definitely not on 12th december why because a can withdraw so the criteria of b the the criteria of all these all this criteria would not have met correct on 12th december so hence on 12th december we cannot recognize a revenue can we recognize on 21st december can i recognize on 21st december or 21st december if you look at here we are following all the criteria isn't it we have both the parties have approved we guy knows the rights payment term uh, is uh, is approved by the by the student and uh, uh, and if you look at here the commercial substance okay the commercial substance is known and it is probable that b guide will collect the consideration from the student so that is also probable so which means when we are satisfying the performance obligation we can recognize the revenue on 21st december we can recognize revenue what will be the entry then debit trade receivable credit revenue with respect to customer a now the question is what if he doesn't pay what if he doesn't pay see we are as a company for 3 months we are going to satisfy a performance obligation now after 21st december we know that we will satisfy the performance obligation correct and as after 21st december it is clearly the customer cannot take a refund or customer cannot say that you know what i don't want your services so on 21st december after that it's very clear that it is going to into a revenue recognition so hence on 21st december we can recognize even though the entire performance obligation is not satisfied <coughs> okay because the customer have enrolled the course and the contract is now binding and we will fulfill the contract but if we have not fulfilled the contract okay after 3 months we will have to reverse the revenue so let's say by february we did not fulfill the contract we did not give him the course we guy did not give him the course in that case this revenue will have to be reversed but as ifrs 15 says that once you have legal right to receive revenue you can recognize the revenue because you know that you will fulfill the contract then you can recognize the revenue but what if the student does not pay what if he does not pay if he does not pay then it will go to irrecoverable debts but we have given the revenue we have given the services we have satisfied the performance obligation but if he does not pay then we will do what we will do we will take it into trade uh, we will take it into irrecoverable debts so let us say after 3 months after 3 months if student does not pay if a did not pay then the question will be trade receivable whether there will be bad debt should it take into bad debt this is one question second question is if v guide did not satisfy performance obligation then what will happen if we guy did not satisfy performance obligation then revenue will be reversed the revenue will have to be reversed and what if and what will be the situation there will be no revenue
because we have not satisfied the performance obligation so how can we give revenue so this is one option that is given by the standard because see ultimately even though ifr 15 has given the rules and regulations stating that satisfy performance obligation only then recognize revenue if you are sure that you know you will as a company will satisfy the obligation if you are sure that uh, the a entity will uh, <coughs> you know will collect the consideration then you can recognize revenue after a specific point of time where the contract will be binding in nature and after 21st of december the contract will be binding in nature why because before 21st december they can the student can withdraw after that he cannot withdraw if he comes uh, comes to be guide and says you know what please uh, uh, you know remove me from the uh, sbr courses we'll say no now you have to pay for the services we have already provided so this is an option that's given in the ifrs 15 and this is how we read the standard now there are certain criteria or conditions that you need to or there are certain issues that you need to think of what if the criteria b is not met how can they recognize revenue let's say for example we gave uh, the student we enrolled the student but we are not sure okay we are not sure whether a will be able to pay the money or not so we enrolled a student okay so on 21st december so let's say on on 21st december 2023 a was enrolled for the course enrolled for sbr but but wheel guide is not sure of the consideration whether it will be paid by a so what happened on 21st december uh, a, a was enrolled okay okay on 12th december a was enrolled and after 21st december uh, he is still continuing the course okay so he is still studying our sbr course but he is not but we guide is not sure we are not sure sure whether the a will be uh, paying the money or not see we guide is an online company there could be lot of students who would come so if we give a course to someone saying that you can pay later buy now and enroll now and you can pay later we cannot be sure that okay you no know, that guy will pay what if he doesn't pay what if after 3 months or after 6 months he doesn't pay what will happen so in this situation on 21 12 2023 a was enrolled for this course uh, from from b guy this is sbr but he has not paid for the course but he has enrolled and we have started uh, teaching uh, a for the sbr concepts and giving them live classes but the only criteria that is the problem here is we are not sure about the consideration as you can see in the uh, uh, in the uh, in the sbr concept or in the revenue recognition concept is very clearly mentioned that uh, you know uh, uh, it's very clearly mentioned that uh, uh, criteria b have to be met where uh, you know parties have approved the contract entity can identify the payment terms probable entity will collect the consideration is also required to pay which means customer's ability to pay and the customer's intention to pay only if those intention to pay is very clear yes we can collect the uh, we can show the revenue but here if you can look at here point number 5 which we discussed just now is not coming into picture why because it is not probable that we will collect the consideration so for us from a we are not sure whether we will be able to collect the uh, fees from a or not we enrolled him but we are not sure in that case what we have to do in this case revenue cannot be recognized on 21st december by b guy so when can they re uh, recognize revenue they need to continue assess the contract against the criteria so we should write it that cannot recognize revenue okay and criteria b have to be assessed 
in future if met then you can revenue can be recognized so we guide have to continue to recognize uh, sorry we guide have to continue to assess the criteria against that particular customer and only then they can recognize revenue so i need to continue the assessment in future again if it not in uh, 21st december maybe after 5 10 days i have to check whether this guy will pay or not and then if if on 31st december i am sure that this guy will pay then i can recognize revenue then i can recognize revenue so that is one points that you need to note so you can mention this particular heading as points to be noted points to note okay because why i am telling you this is because in scenarios these kind of situations will be given to you and you need to think that okay there is a criteria called criteria b where they if the entity have to recognize revenue all the parameters of the criteria b have to be met what are the parameters of the criteria b see here they are that the parties have approved the contract the entity can identify each party's right entity can identify payment terms contract as commercial substance it is probable that entity will collect the consideration this is something one most important criteria which will be the true case of the revenue recognition majority of the times uh, specifically in construction industries this particular situation might not happen any construction company cannot say that oh whether the customer will pay the contract uh, contract price or not they are unsure of it so that's what we need to note now we have decided okay we have said that oh you know what if uh, a was enrolled for the course but uh, we guide is not sure on the day when we was enrolled when we are started to satisfy the performance obligation uh, you know what uh, whether we will be able to uh, you know uh, uh, get the collection of fees from student so what will you do so you continue to assess it now second case is let's look at the another case second case is on 21st December two thousand twenty three, twenty first December two thousand twenty three. A was enrolled and was and paid and paid fifty percent advance. Fifty percent advance. Now A. Uh, enrolled for the course on twenty first December, and he paid fifty percent advance. Okay, now what is the case here? How will you treat this advance? Now the situation is here is same as one, but criteria B is not met. Criteria B is not met. Is not met where V guide is not sure. is not sure if remaining amount will be paid the remaining will be paid remaining will be paid so criteria is not sure that whether we will be able to get this amount or not now 50% advance is meant so let us say for example Thousand dollar is the advance amount that we received. So total amount was two thousand dollar. We received a fifty percent advance of thousand dollar. We received. How will we guide recognize this particular particular amount? How will we recognize this particular amount? This is the question. Now, we can recognize this amount as revenue if there are no further obligations to the customer. We give him the course. after 3 months we gave him the course and after uh, you know he paid the amount it is not refundable so only then we can recognize the revenue so we can say that one case is that one case we guide has no obligations to a no obligation outstanding to a to a second 
डॉलर थाउजेंड इज नॉट रिफंडेबल इफ दीज टू आर मेट देन दिस डॉलर थाउजेंड कैन बी शोन एज डेबिट कैश क्रेडिट रेवेन्यू इफ द अबाउ मेट इफ द अबाउ इज मेट okay if the above is met then they can show that so once we enroll the course we gave him all the recordings and told him to start watch the recordings now you can do that so we gave him all the uh, obligations and we don't have anything else to do okay let's say he purchased only the basic package and there's no live class so we no package so all the recordings we have given to him and we have told him the advance you have given is not refundable because when he enrolled it was on 10th december 21st December we have uh, got collected the advance revenue and he was enrolled and he paid the advance now he cannot come back and say you know what i want the refund no that will not be will not allowed refund is is not refundable this 10000 is not refundable in that case on 21st December itself i can recognize this revenue if not if the above these two are met if these two are met if these two are met then they can recognize if not then how will we show this if not it will be if okay if these conditions if not met if these conditions are not met then it will be shown as debit cash credit deferred revenue deferred revenue this is how it will be shown okay so you can also take a note of it it's very important for you to understand that if someone have you know entered into a contract with us and they gave us advance but the criteria b of the identification of contract with customer is not met that the entity is unable to say that we will collect consideration any one point okay so any one point in this both parties have approved if one party is not approved then the criteria b is not met uh, entity knows the party's rights if entity does not know the party party is right then the criteria is not met payment term is not defined then the criteria is not met commercial substance is not valuable then the criteria is not met if it is probable if if it is not probable that entity will collect consideration criteria is not met so if those criteria are not met but we have received the advance we have received the advance then we can show the advance as revenue only after satisfying all the performance obligation to the customer second the advance that we have received is not refundable so if we have given all the courses on 21st december itself that okay we have given all the courses and we have received the uh, uh, we have given all the courses and uh, there is nothing obligation left to us so we can show the revenue on 21st december if we are saying that we are giving the performance obligation after one month okay on 31st february 28th february only our uh, course is completed then only 28th february i can recognize this 1000 dollar advance only if the obligation is satisfied i can recognize this as a revenue till then the advance will have to be recognized as deferred revenue this is how it will be met but standard is giving an option for the entity to recognize revenue early like for example in we guide majority of the students would be taking the recorded sessions so the moment they enroll we are given the performance obligation they have got all the recordings so performance obligation is satisfied so date when they join itself i can recognize the revenue but if i am giving live classes along with it then i cannot recognize revenue until the live class is completed so only after the live class is completed i can recognize this advance as a revenue till then it has to be shown as an advance as a deferred revenue so if these two conditions are not met then it has to be shown as a loud standing liability that we have received cash on 21st december 2023 we have received cash but it will be shown as advanced 
revenue, which is deferred revenue. I hope it is clear. To make this understand this particular concept more clear to you, let me do an activity from BPT, which is called as activity number one. Identify the contract with customer. It's a very good activity. It will help you to understand the concepts in detail. As you can see with one step of revenue itself, how deeper the concepts we are taking. So that's the next step. We are going to learn this activity. So in this activity is about a identification of contract with the customer. Now there is a company called as Jute, which is a major property developer. On 1st June 2003, Jute entered into a contract with Munro for the sale of a building for $3 million. So Jute is the seller and Munro is the buyer. So Jute is the seller and Munro is the buyer. The value of the property is $3 million. Okay, so $3 million is the sale of a property. Munro paid Jute a non-refundable deposit of $150,000 on 1st June 2003 and entered into a long-term financing agreement with Jute for remaining 95% of the promised consideration. So out of 3 million, right, out of 3 million, $150,000, there was an advance that was paid. For remaining 95% of the, of the revenue, what was done? A, uh, a financing agreement was entered. The terms of financing agreement are that if Munro defaults, Jute can repossess the building but cannot seek further compensation from Munro even if the collateral does not cover the full value of the amount owed. So what is the, uh, what is the condition? The financing agreement uh, uh, are that if Munro defaults, Jute can repossess the building. So if any chance Munro does not make the payment, then Jute can claim the building Right? Even if the collateral does not cover the full value of the amount owed. So even if it is not full amount, the Jute can claim the collateral because Munro is not paying the money back. So if let's say Munro paid a 1 million out of 3 million, but remaining 2 million he did not pay. In that case, Jute can go and claim the building. Why? Because he has not paid 2 million. So even though the, the building is only 3 million, if Munro did not pay the money, then uh, he, uh, Jute can claim the contract. The building cost of Jute $1.8 million to construct. Munro had obtained control of the building on 1st June 2003. <coughs> so on 1st June 2003, Munro had uh, taken the control of the building. Right, which means uh, performance obligation was satisfied by Jute to Munro on 1st June 2003. Because they have taken the control. And uh, Jute took around 1.8 million dollar to construct the building. So 1.8 million dollar to construct, he is selling it for 3 million. That is Jude's profit. That is Jude's profit. Munro intends to use the building as a fitness center. The building is located in a city where competition of the fitness industry is high and many successful fitness centers already exist. Munro's experience to the date has been in stores selling both health foods and it has no experience on the fitness industry. Okay. Why these sentences are given? It will fall into picture very soon when I explain you the answer. Munro's health food stores are pledged as a collateral for long term financing arrangements and the health food business has been declining profits over the last two years. So we are getting a conclusion about Munro's financial condition. They have a, a you know profitable business which is the health business but that profit is declining okay no problem Munro's uh, profit uh, declining profitable business is actually under long-term collateral with financing agreement so they have outstanding loans or a liability already there okay again over and above Munro is starting a new fitness center in the building that they have acquired again through further loans so Munro's uh, current business is uh, having decline of profits. Munro already has a high liability on the current business. Munro is starting a new business which Munro is not experienced in. And he is starting it in a city center where he has acquired the building with high liability. Further, the place where he is starting the business have high competition. So... The present condition of Munro is bad 
because the profits are declining for the current business as well as he is having high loans. The future condition also looks very bad. Why? Because Munro will have additional loans and does not have any experience running the fitness industry. So it shows the potential of Munro, whether he could pay ability as well the intention of Munro to pay the remaining consideration of 95%. It is under questionable. That's why these sentences or this paragraph is given. Munro intends to primarily use income generated by fitness center to repay for the loan. So the ability of Munro is under questionable. Now Jude cannot claim that, you know what, it is probable that Jude will collect the consideration. Why? Because Munro's ability is questionable and whether he will have the intention to pay is also questionable because he will going to pay the loan based on the revenue generated from fitness center only. Okay, now required. Required whether Jude can apply the revenue recognition IFRS 15 to the contract with Munro and explain whether required accounting treatment of 150,000 deposit in the financial statement of Jute at 1st June 2003. So on 1st June 2003, what or how we are going to show the revenue recognition model is the question. So, uh, we know this is BPP activity 1. I'm just gonna, you know, write it here. So, BPP activity 1. Okay. So, when we write first, we need to write by claiming what is the revenue recognition model criteria says. So as per the, you can write by starting as per the revenue recognition model of IFRS 15, right? What, what does it say as per the IFRS 15? Number one, Jude must have a contract with Munro. Okay, this is A. B, the following criteria should be met. The following criteria should be met what does the following criteria says first one is that okay first one jude and munro must have a contract okay have a approved contract so i will put it as uh, must have an approved approved contract second what does the second say jute can identify jute can identify its own and munro's rights under the contract so, as per the question, is this present? As per the question, is this present? Yes, it is present. Yes, it is present. Is this present? Second one is present? Yes, it is also present. Now, what about the third one? Okay. Jute can identify the payment terms. Jute can identify payment terms. Is that present? Yes, that is also present. In the question, it's there. It's very clearly given, right? The payment terms is 95% will be under loan financing. So, it's, that's also clear. Fourth one, there must be commercial substance of the contract. The contract should have, contract must have commercial substance. So, yes, the contract has commercial substance. So, that is also done. Then, what is the fourth one, next one? Okay, what is the fourth, uh, fifth, uh, sorry, fifth one? Fifth one is, it is 
probable that jute will collect the consideration due it is probable that jute will collect the consideration due what about this one this is what is under question why look at this for this to happen for this to happen munro should have okay for this to for to for jute to say that pro, it, jute will collect the consideration due munro should have munro's ability to pay and munro's intention to pay munro's intention to pay should be evaluated munro's ability and munro's intention to pay have to be evaluated but that is under significant doubtful why it is under significant doubtful let's look at that so we can write that as next step okay see i'm just writing these uh, uh these things and all you don't need to write in your exam okay you can you don't need to write like this or you don't need to show all the stigma you just need to mention the criteria you can mention in one ink only okay i'm just giving it to you so that you can highlight you can understand the importance of that particular aspect now next thing what i'm going to write is okay next thing what i'm going to write is i'm going to talk about munro's ability and intention to pay so munro's ability and intention to make now okay so munro's ability and intention to pay now in this situation first one is that munro's liability under the loan is limited because the loan is a non recourse so if munro defaults jute is uh, and not entitled to the full compensation for the amount but only has the right to repossess the building so which means munro's you should write that munro's liability under loan is limited okay which means if munro defaults defaults then jute can only repossess the building repossess the building which cost jute dollar 1.8 million whereas sale value is dollar 3 million so which means munro uh, if he is supposed to pay 3 million right but if munro doesn't pay 3 million or he paid 150000 after that he is not able to pay he is not paying to uh, even 1 million also he cannot pay so what will happen jute can repossess the building but the building cost jute only 1.8 million so he is getting back only 1.8 million right the building is getting back only 1.8 million and then he have to find some other uh, 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 some other person to find the value right so the sale value of the building the sale value of the building is only 3 million dollars the sale value is 3 million dollars whereas the cost is only 1.8 so he is not able to get jute won't get the 3 million he won't get the 3 million rather he will get only 1.8 million if munro makes the default okay if munro makes the default second what is the intention of munro munro intends to repay the loan from income derived from business center there is a lot of risk due to competition and munro has limited experience so munro you can write that munro intends to pay the loan using using what using the income 
generated from fitness center okay income generated from the fitness center but there are high risk due to due to high competition and lack of munros experience in fitness industry that's the second one so we can underline few sentences so the cost 1.8 sale value 3 million liability is limited mundro intends to pay the loan using income generated from fitness center high risk due to high competition and munro's experience in lack of ex munro's experience in fitness industry so these are the few pointers that we can highlight second munro have no other income or assets that that could be used to repay the loan and munro's health business current health business is in decline and all the assets of the health business are already pledged for collateral so it's unlikely that they could be sold to generate income to repay the loan so munro's you can write it that munro's current health business current health business is in is in decline and assets are pledged as collateral collateral so it is unlikely to generate income income to repay the loan from jude okay so <coughs> that is also very important so the health business is in decline and their assets are pledged as collateral already for other loans for other financing agreements so looking up all this uh, situations uh, we can clearly write it that uh, it is uh, it is therefore not probable that jude will collect the consideration to which Uh, the the entitled exchange for the transfer of the building. So hence the contract does not meet the IFRS criteria of revenue recognition model. So hence you can write that that it is therefore not probable that Jude will collect the consideration. remaining from munro from munro therefore the revenue the contract i could put it as the contract does not meet the revenue recognition okay revenue recognition criteria as per ifrs 15 as per ifrs 15 uh and the model cannot be applied the model cannot be applied as of so you can write it as at 1st june 2000 x3 so this is the situation on 1st june 2000 x3 that they cannot apply the revenue recognition model <coughs> they can reassess it 
in future whether the model changes or not but as of 1st june 2003 the uh, revenue recognition model does not apply so in this situation okay what will we do with respect to the amount of 150000 deposit we have given so in this situation where the revenue recognition model does not apply ifrs permits the amount received from the customer to recognize revenue if all consideration have been received all consideration have been received and all performance obligation have been satisfied and the seller has terminated the contract and the amount is non refundable but those situation have applied so hence the revenue they jute cannot recognize any of the consideration as a revenue so we can maybe write that as well so in situations where where the revenue recognition model cannot be applied where the revenue recognition model cannot be applied as the ifrs 15 ifrs 15 permits permits the entity to recognize the amounts received from customer as revenue if one all consideration have been received have been received and all performance obligation have been satisfied second the amount received is non refundable and third the seller has terminated the contract terminated the contract uh, so let us say you uh, sold something to someone or you are giving a service to someone after some time what happened is he stopped to pay the customer stopped to pay so you keep on giving the service but he is not paying you so why will you give the service if he is not paying you so whatever money you have received so far you can show it as a revenue because you have uh, given the performance obligation and you have received the consideration and the consideration is not refundable and you have terminated the contract in that case you can show a re revenue but neither of this applied because the contract is not yet terminated 95% of the revenue we have only uh, not received only 5% advance we have received second we have not satisfied all the performance obligation so okay we have satisfied the performance obligation but uh, we have not uh, terminated the contract yet right and we have not received all the consideration so hence we can say that jute cannot recognize revenue revenue with respect to the amount received so neither of this has applied so substantially all and amount is received is non refundable and seller has terminated the contract so none of these have happened so so you can say none of the above so you can say none of the above has happened okay none of the above has happened hence hence jute cannot jute cannot recognize revenue for any amount received from whom 
from Munro. So what we should do with that deposit we have received? So therefore, therefore, dollar one fifty thousand deposit should be recognized as a liability on first june 2000 x3 what will be the journal entry for that you will debit cash dollar 150000 you can credit either as advance or deferred revenue whatever you want to call it you can call that so deferred revenue or you can call it as deposit that's as per the uh you know the company whatever they want to call it as as 150000 this will be the journal entry so as you can see now the depth of uh, the sbr subject right like with one contract how they have developed a scenario and where we have to look at the criteria of the contract for a revenue recognition model where the the contract should be approved by both they should know the rights entity can uh, understand the rights Uh, entity knows the payment terms and uh, you know the uh, the consideration to be received can is probable only then you can recognize a revenue and the contract is a kind of like a valid revenue contract and you can recognize a revenue so hence that's what it this particular standard says but standard is giving an option they are giving multiple options saying that okay you know what if you are not meeting the criteria then when you meet the criteria you recognize revenue If you are not again, if you have met the criteria, this one fifty thousand can be considered as a revenue revenue recognition. So debit uh, trade receivable nine fifty uh, remaining amount of whatever the amount is nine fifty or one million and one million eight fifty thousand sorry two million eight fifty thousand debit uh, credit revenue nine or three million and uh, and the debit cash with respect to one fifty thousand that can also be possible if they had met the criteria which is uh jute uh, knows that uh, it is probable munro's ability of uh, payment can could have been defined or could have been uh, uh, it's probable to show uh, payment ability of munro then you could have shown that revenue but but even though we gave the possession of building to munro we cannot recognize revenue why because uh, munro's ability pay, payment ability is, is under questionable so hence they are saying no need to recognize you cannot recognize revenue the 150 dollar 150000 dollar should be recognized as what as refundable deposit if munro's ability of uh, paying the consideration was uh, proved by jute then jute could have shown a revenue of 3 million and debited cash of 150000 and remaining 2 million 850000 could be shown as trade receivable but that's what the old standard they used to do but because of that after that when munro does not pay they will take the entire trade receivable to uh, you know bad debts so now you have a revenue your 3 million revenue tomorrow you have nothing your amount is not there it is wiped off so it is like uh, shareholders are believing that oh you know what they have got a revenue but the revenue are not getting converted into cash so to have that sync between the revenue and the cash uh, have that sync between revenue and cash flow profits and cash flow IFRS 15 comes up with a model that if you are having a construction kind of a <coughs> or if you are having a revenue recognition, if you are entering into a contract with someone, then definitely look at the situation where the amount is uh, you know going to be uh, paid or not. If not, do not show revenue, and show it revenue only when the situation gets better. Whatever amount you receive from the customer initially, it will be taken as a deposit. That's what the criteria says. So similarly, for as I told you, for there is a guy who came to V guy who has not paid, but I enrolled him for the course. I have given my performance obligation, right? So I can show revenue, you know. But what if he doesn't pay me back? I will have to show revenue, and then he does not pay me back. I will have to take it into bad debts as to, uh, remove the trade receivable. So to avoid that, they are saying show revenue when you are substantially sure that this contract will be viable and the person will pay you the money. so that there is a sync between the revenue to the cash flows earlier that sync was not there and hence this particular ifrs 15 model have been developed